Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I will talk uh, about the world of Topinka database that is uh, probably the newest of the databases uh, we are going to discuss uh, uh, today. Uh, let me start with uh, an overview. It seems that uh, tax-based statistics uh, always uh, uh, hit a nerve of the economics profession. And um, for those who are interested in the history of economic thought, there was a huge debate at the end of the 19th century around the so-called Pareto's law. And people there, starting with Pareto, but all the other people around the world discussing the Pareto laws, were using uh, tax statistics. So it is not uh, something new to economics, actually. That was the first time that income inequality was empirically studied in, uh, in such an extensive way. Then in the mid-50s, uh, Kuznets used the tax data to study the uh, share of the upper income groups in uh, uh, the US. And uh, Kuznets commented uh, for its magnitude and persistence. Mm -hmm. After the Second World War, there was a, a change in the income distribution and matched in the record. And Arthur Barnes, uh, NBR, and then uh, governor of the board, uh, said that is one of the great social uh, revolutions of history. And then recently, uh, the tax uh, uh, data by Atkinson, Piketty, Saez, and the things I'm going to talk uh, now uh, brought to the fore the big uh, increase in inequality in rich countries, especially. And now the 1% has become part of our everyday language. So it's strange how tax data produce such an interest in, uh, in the profession and also outside the profession, uh, but on the other hand, they have been used not much by economists, especially people working on uh, income inequality. Well, there are many reasons for, for that, and, uh, uh, but it is still surprising that uh, we have had to wait until 2011, when the World Top Income Database was released, uh, to have an international database ba uh, based on uh, tax data. Now, the WTID uh, collects uh, produce, uh, data on uh, the shares of personal income received by the richest groups of taxpayers. They have data for 29 countries over a period of 143 years. The first observation is from Den Denmark in 1870. And the last one is uh, for a bunch of countries in 2012. And all uh, figures in the database are computed for ta from tax statistics, except for uh, uh, China and uh, uh, more recent uh, Finnish figures. Now, three characteristics of the project are <coughs> important. The project is dynamic, cooperative, and easy access. Dynamic because uh, uh, people involved in these projects want to uh, extend forwards and backwards uh, the time series, to add a series for new countries, and, to add a, uh, and they plan also to add a series for uh, uh, other concepts, like uh, not only for income, but for uh, uh, earnings and, uh, and wealth. It is a cooperative project uh, in the sense that everyone is invited to participate if uh, uh, he or she has uh, relevant data. And there is easy access, because if you go to that website, uh, you can download all the data. That is the coverage as of September 2014. You can see the countries in red are the countries for which data are available. And the countries on, in blue are countries for which uh, uh, new series are, going, uh, are being produced now. That is something that I don't, don't, you don't need to read, don't worry. That is something, something that I did to give you an idea of what this data set has. That is, uh, uh, each uh, gray square indicates that there is available the uh, figure for the top 1% income share. Uh, you have uh, uh, countries in columns and years in rows. And you can see, look at first at the right uh, hand side, and you can see that, uh, that the series are very dense. You have a lot of observations, much less missing values that you would find in, in the other data sets we were talking about. 
But the interesting thing is, is that if you go to the left-hand side, you have a lot of observations for the years before 1945. So it is uh, for sure the only source that allows you, at least now, to study pre-Second World War changes in income inequality. So length, density, the two main strengths of the data set. And the third strength is that you uh, uh, have a much better coverage of the top of the income distribution than in uh, sample surveys. Uh, we all know that the rich people uh, tend to, uh, well, do not appear, do not feature, or tend to be uh, out, uh, not collect, uh, data not collected in sample surveys. We have uh, uh, information based on tax data for the richest people in each country. Of course, there are weaknesses, and some of these weaknesses are uh, linked to the fact that tax data have not been used much uh, in the recent decades. Uh, the definitions of income or uh, refer to uh, administrative rules. Uh, the reference unit is not how the household or the individual, but, but it is the tax paying unit that is not uh, what we would like for welfare analysis in many cases. There are important discontinuities due to uh, changes in tax rules. There is, of course, the problem of tax avoidance. And uh, the, last, uh, the last thing, uh, you, you cannot uh, usually estimate uh, standard inequality measures like the Gini index or the Tile index, but you can always have information about the show of income going to the top uh, income earners. Uh, of course, we could have a similar slide for all the other sources with strengths and weaknesses. But that is what we are talking about. Now, before uh, describing the data set, let me mention briefly uh, the problems uh, of methodology using tax data. That is a, uh, the typical kind of raw material that uh, is used uh, for this kind of analysis. That is a table that I drew from uh, the paper by Atkins on Piketty Sites in the Journal of Economic Literature. It refers to income tax data. To income, oh, a little talk here. Income tax data uh, <coughs> in the UK in 1911-1912. Uh, uh, and uh, the information that you have is uh, you have uh, income brackets for the top of the distribution, number of persons in each income bracket, and the total income received by these people uh, uh, during their fiscal year. Of course, having this number and this number, you can compute the average for uh, this income bracket. Then you have the total number of persons filling tax uh, records, just 11, well, 12,000 people in 1911, uh, 1912 in the UK. And you have the total income of these people. How can you use this data? Uh, the Pareto, when Pareto wrote, people were using just this information. Then what happens? Uh, thanks to Kuznets. Uh, Kuznets uh, basically laid down the methodology uh, followed by uh, Atkinson, Piketty, Saez, Alvarez, and all the others. First point, the basic procedure is to compare the number and the income of persons represented on federal income tax is talking about the U.S., uh, which is the total population and its uh, income receipts. So going back here, we, have, we need the number of total people in the population, and we need the number for total income to know how much uh, this income accounts uh, uh, for, <coughs> to know how this income uh, fits into uh, the income share of top income groups. Uh, of course, uh, these uh, brackets do not coincide with uh, the percentiles. So what we have to do is to interpolate within brackets to compute the top 1%, uh, top 5%, and so on of the population. There is an excellent discussion of all these problems in uh, the paper by Tony Atkinson. Let me remind you some of the issues, important issues. Uh, the first one, uh, okay. I already mentioned that we can compute only one inequality measure. Uh, when we <coughs> then we have problems. We have to decide about control totals for population. So 
taxation is uh, uh, rarely, well, not rarely, is mostly now on an individual basis, but in many countries over time, uh, the tax unit is the family. So we have to account for the fact that there are uh, married females usually. The second point is uh, control totals for income. Where do we find that the total income uh, to compute the top income shares? So there are basically two, met two methodologies used by people. The first one is uh, uh, to use income tax data themselves and to estimate the income of non-tax uh, filers. The second methodology is to use external control, basically national accounts. Then we have an issue about interpolation. How do we, uh, which distribution do we fit within in, uh, each uh, income bracket? Uh, the typical thing that is what is uh, done by almost all people working in this field is to use uh, a Pareto distribution of this kind. But there are other alternatives, as discussed by Frank Howell and Meta in uh, the paper in Review Economy Studies. Uh, in the paper by Tony Atkinson, you find uh, uh, an estimation under assuming a Pareto distribution of what happens if you change uh, the, the size of the uh, reference population. So if you increase the reference population by C percent, you see here, uh, then uh, you have to go further down the uh, income di distribution to locate the top X percent group. And that means uh, that uh, top income share goes up. It goes up by this number here if you assume a Pareto distribution. So that means that the choice of the individual population matters. So if you move from uh, taking individuals, uh, so you, you approximate the, your population of taxpayers with individuals 20 plus, or you approximate with individuals 15 plus, you get different levels for the shares. But the effect, uh, in practice, can be uh, relatively small. You have an effect of population revisions, because uh, there are uh, uh, revisions of the number of people in a, resident in a country done by statistical office. And you have, and that is more related to the data set, variability across countries uh, about this assumption. That is a chart, again, you have not to read, but that is a, a summary of the different definitions of the reference population used by uh, people producing the series in the data set. And you can see that Argentina is individual aged 20 plus, Australia aged 15 plus, and then you have adjustment for married uh, people and so on. So that means that you have a degree of uh, variability across uh, uh, the series. Do, you, do we want to keep this or not? That is an open question. When you move to income controls, uh, again, you have uh, problems, and that matters much more, probably, than not probably, matters much more than for population controls. The big issue here is that you have a variability of the non-taxable uh, items of income. So for a, two typical examples are transfers and capital gains. In many countries, capital gains are excluded, in some others are included, and uh, capital gains can, be, can make a big difference for the estimation of top income shares. But also transfers. In many places, uh, transfers are exempted from taxation, so they, they do not appear in tax statistics. Then, uh, uh, as before, we have a problem or revisions in external control. Suppose that uh, we use national accounts. You all be, well, uh, know very well that uh, uh, national accounts estimates change from time to time. We are going through one of these changes right now with the incorporation in uh, uh, GDP of uh, new items that were not before included. And that has an effect on uh, the income of household uh, of the household sector. And again, uh, and here, it is very important to compare the statistics uh, to external national accounts benchmarks. Now, let me give you a quick example. This is from a paper uh, forthcoming in the Journal of Economic Inequality by Rick Burkhauser and uh, two, uh, I think, Australian guys. That is about uh, Australia. Uh, the, this series here is this, the series for Australia made by uh, Tony Atkinson and uh, Andrew Lee. This uh, series here, just below, 
is exactly the same as uh, the other series, except for uh, incorporating revisions uh, in uh, population totals and uh, national accounts made by the statistical office. So no other change except for the revisions. The trend is more or less the same, but you can see that there is, in some years, a change in levels. Then uh, uh, Burkhauser and co-authors suggest that you, should, uh, uh, you, you can obtain a different, a more homogeneous series over time, excluding capital gains, relative to the series produced by Atkinson and Lee. And what they get is this series here. So the, train, the trend is upwards, is the same, but it is uh, much milder. So that is an example of the problems that you have with this data. That is, uh, very quickly about this chart. This chart uh, is something that I produced. I used the income totals available in the database, and uh, I took uh, the ratio of these income totals to uh, a, a, nation, uh, well, a pre tax household income from national accounts from the OECD database. Suppose uh, uh, this should be more comparable across countries. And you can see that the quantity, the amount of income captured in tax based statistics varies over time, that is the US, and you see that there is a continuous decline, so that is uh, the amount of income on which, uh, of which we are talking about when uh, discussing the inequality in, uh, in the US using top income data, but uh, there is a, a large chunk of income that is not included, that is 60%, so 40% of the income going to the household sector is not included in the analysis. In some other countries you have an upward trend, flat trend in France, and big differences across countries in levels. So there may be problems uh, of comparability across countries, something recognized by people. Uh, I don't have much time uh, to, to go through all the details, but let me show you. This is a chart uh, that is a comparison for the US. So we have two dimensions, comparisons of inequality trends and comparisons of, uh, uh, across countries. If we look at the inequality trends, that's, this series here is uh, the, Alvar the Piketty and Saez series for the US. Interestingly, this blue series here that matches quite well is uh, estimated from the Bureau of Economic Administration's data. Uh, it matches quite well because it was essentially based uh, on tax statistics. It is a synthetic series produced uh, at the time. That is uh, the number, the series for pre-tax household from the com, uh, current population survey. And you can see that the overall trend is the same, but the increase in equality is much uh, smoother. The red one is the series computed from uh, CPS data by Stephen Jenkins, Burkhauser, and two other co-authors, trying to match as much as possible definitions and, and so on from, of the current population survey uh, to the tax data. And you can see that the matching is much better. That is a, a, a comparison of list data uh, that is personal income. So personal income of individuals, individuals uh, 20 plus, uh, top 1% share. On the horizontal axis, you have uh, the number from the WTID. You can see that the WTID usually has much larger numbers. There are many explanations for that, but we can use uh, the list data to get a better understanding of whether there is a, a, an inconsistency between the two sources that we have to explain, or it is due to statistical reasons. Now, the website is uh, very easy to use. Uh, there are nice features. I'm not going to discuss that. Is the example of the typical data available there. Uh, so you have a, a codification, a code for each variable, but the codification rules are not provided. You have a, a series, one series for each top uh, uh, share. So that is, for example, the top 5% income share of, uh, in Argentina. You have uh, uh, some nodes, but not very, uh, not very uh, developed. So uh, we need more information on that side. So to conclude... How can we uh, develop further WTID? There, these are, it's not only for the people there, but uh, what researchers can do in general. So I would suggest them to streamline and release variable codification rules. That is uh, something that would help researchers. 
uh, provide much more details about uh, which, which are the taxable income items available. You can go to the, uh, the, the, the two thick volumes to have this information, but uh, if you want to use the data set, it's better to have them there. I would try to provide lower and upper, oops, sorry, uh, lower and up, upper limits, and, and uh, in perspective, it would be important to include uh, all original raw data in, uh, in the database. And then cross-validation and cross-country comparability needs to be further assessed. Uh, since I do not have time, let me just conclude with this quotation from Kuznets. It is as if one tried to paint a fine picture with thick brushes and large blobs of somewhat mixed colors, but still better than a white page. Thank you.